<laughs> My bad. <laughs> Pen Penelope and I know better. Every <laughs> Romy is also survived by enormous children, Nancy and Karen, Kenny and Steve and Marin and Jimmy and their children, Corrine, Virginia, Jamie, Jessica and Emily. Lastly, Romy is survived by many special friends, all of them who, who made her feel like a part of her family. And, uh, and uh, you, you may know that uh, following this time, and I'll mention it again a little bit later, there is a, a gathering that uh, you're all invited to over at AZ88. And if you don't know exactly where that is, there are some maps that are out in the, uh, in the entrance area. And at this time, I'm going to be uh, asking Cleve to come up here and, and share some things with you. Good morning. I'm Cleve Canelli. I'm uh, the oldest of Romy's three sons. And, um, you know, first of all, on behalf of the family, we want to thank so sincerely uh, your presence here today and and we do realize that there have been many sacrifices whether it's jobs whether it's school uh, whether it's travel costs uh, we recognize getting to Phoenix right now this time of year is not easy and uh, is a hardship and certainly uh, I'm so deeply touched that that we're able to share this time with you and we we thank you so sincerely for uh, your presence um, and, you know, what would mom be saying right now? Uh, you know, spring training, uh, spring break, middle of the day on Friday, and she spilled over to the extra room. Way to go, mom. <laughs> Way to go. And, 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 and trust me, she's psyched about it right now. <laughs> um, and and I, I, I have to say, Norm, we're so, we're so blessed w that you feel well enough to be here today. Um, I, th this would be nothing without your presence, and we're so thankful for the time you shared with mom and the way you took care of her for, for 31 years. We're, we're so, so blessed for that, and thank you so much. Um, mom. Um, mom had a lot of opinions, uh, <laughs> and, and she, had, she had opinions on funerals, uh, and, and she made it known a couple of times that she wanted to instill in us funerals are for the living. And on top of that, there's a couple of instances that she shared with me, whereas uh, the elephant in the room was just never touched on. And that bothered mom. That, 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 that question, what happened, was never answered. And I want to make sure that uh, I do fill in some gaps right now and some blanks because so many of you uh, I have had direct contact with and I've been asked that question. And you talked to mom a week before she went in the hospital. You had lunch with mom. Mom was running around like she always did. Uh, so, so I do want to spend just a couple minutes just, just giving some insight. Uh, Romy had COPD, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. It's the uh, third leading killer in this country, uh, horrific respiratory disease. And what it does, in essence, is it does not allow uh, the victim to emit uh, the carbon dioxide that they need to. And the ratio of carbon dioxide to oxygen does not work within the system and throughout the cells. So what does that do? It, it causes issues, uh, as you would expect, in terms of fatigue and in terms of shortness of breath. Uh, but the disease also attacks an individual uh, mentally and uh, emotionally too because there is tremendous trauma with that dynamic of just not having the, the proper oxygen flow. Uh, let's see, now we're talking three Wednesdays ago. Uh, one of my brothers and I convinced mom to go down and get a chest x-ray because she was struggling with a, a, a bacteria that was in her chest and was problematic for her. And uh, a secondary condition mom did have that we didn't find out until she was in ICU is she had a little lip on the esophagus that, that caused issues in two ways. When mom tried to cough, she couldn't 
uh, bring things like you or I can as far as the chest and lungs and, and couldn't expel anything. And it also actually shut down her breathing and shut down her air supply. And it did just the opposite what it would a healthy individual with healthy lungs. So when she coughed, it was actually just the exact opposite effect that she was looking for. Went into ICU. Uh, unfortunately, things just did not progress and they did decline. And after 11 days in ICU, mom passed uh, last Sunday at, at 515 and she passed uh, gently and she passed quietly and with her family around her. Um, and, you know, somebody that hears that story, you know, from the surface, somebody can say, wow, COPD, you know, got Romy. You know, COPD won the fight against Romy. Um, you know, the way I have chosen to look at it is really that uh, I don't think COPD won. Uh, I if you do some research and you, ch and you really dig into what that disease, the path that disease takes you down, uh, it's not the path that Romy allowed it to take her. Um, and in my opinion, uh, COPD did not cheat Romy out of life. Um, mom cheated COPD out of its typical death. And mom lived right up until going into ICU and not coming out. And that is reality, and many of us in this room know that. She did not let it stop her. She did not go on about it. She did not talk about it. Um, and it's almost, I choose to look at it, it's almost like if, you, if you're going through life and you're plotting on a, on, a, on a ledger, you know, the best things on one side, the worst things on the other, and, and so often you, you plug something on the worst side, and then later in life it somehow moves over to the best side, either a divorce or a change in job or some event that at the time seems terrible but then kind of moves into it opened up these doors that would have never been opened unless this happened. Uh, you know, that's how I choose to see how mom passed, is uh, the worst thing about mom's passing is it was sudden, it was unexpected, and it was without getting notice. Um, but if you look at it, the, the, the best thing about mom's passing is that it was sudden, it was unexpected, and it was, out, was without notice. Um, and so I, I really anchor to that, and I do look at it that way, and I, I'm pretty sure she does too. Um, I, uh, I have some, some grade school buddies that are here supporting me today, and uh, there's a group of real close friends I've known forever, and we play cards every, uh, every so often. And not many card games ago, uh, during one hand, just out of the blue, a couple of the, the guys were trying to rib me and jab me a little bit, and they started calling me Romy's boy. <laughs> and so, uh, so, so, you know, what I'm hearing is, okay, what's Romy's boy's bet? Okay, Romy's boy, you in? And at the time, it was just a light banter and a jab, but my goodness, now I, I look at that, <laughs> I look at that term, and I say how proud and how much I cherish and how much I love the fact that I have been, am, and always will be Romy's boy. Thanks. I'm Steve. I'm the middle son. You don't get these at every funeral. <laughs> Thanks, Lenny. Um, Mom would have loved this. Um, Mom was different. I think most of the people in here who knew her knew the first or second time you met her that you were dealing with something unusual. Probably by the third time you were wondering what you'd gotten yourself into. <laughs> but you certainly knew where she was coming from. And I got to know her differently. Um, I first met her at a very early age. 